Good morning, um, back in the game, back on it, hot like tronic, okay, I don't know what that means, but, um, back in these streets, um, last week was really bad, and the main thing is that I'm, like, completely in denial about how the weather affects me, because I'm not completely a real person, I'm mainly, like, I'd say I'm, like, 50% stuffed animal, a teddy bear, um, and 50% puppy so I'm always like wait my feelings but so it turns out that I do not do well when the weather outside is like minus 15 degrees Celsius for four days in a row I just like lose the light of my soul but anyway I'm back and I finished my short story that this whole series um, was kind of like around so I don't I don't think I have writer's block anymore um, anyway, let me tell you about the story. So it was called um, The Sisters and now it's called A Question of Luck, kind of an homage to Bessie Head's A Question of Power. But I really wanted to explore luck and like all these small coincidences that like change the trajectory of people's lives. And the story is like 25 pages and it takes place over 45 years, which I have never done before. Like the longest story that I've ever written that like took place over the longest amount of time is maybe like a week or two weeks usually I really like like minute time frames just because I think they're really interesting but I, I completely forgot but like the whole point of like a novel or a short story or fiction is that you can set your story over any length of time I did not know that <laughs> I completely forgot that I forgot that that was an option um, and also I think I thought I couldn't do it, but as I said, I'm in the seminar now in this class in which uh, our professor is challenging us to write stories that take place over like 50 years. So I'm really excited about my story. I think I did well, um, and that's why I'm recording this video now because my workshop is tonight uh, for this class in which we like discuss the story and whether it like actually succeeded and so I feel like I should make this video before they like destroy it and they're like oh this is garbage and you will never amount to anything I mean they don't say that but I hear that um, let me tell you a bit about the story and then I might like read it. so the story takes place in Swaziland um, and it, it's weird because it has like a roving POV like a, a moving point of view which is something I usually really hate but I blame Alice Munro because I started reading her short story collection a few weeks ago and I guess I hadn't known that you could do it well. That you could do like a roving point of view well. And by roving point of view I mean like moving from this person's perspective to that person's perspective like in a really short space. Like maybe a page. You move through like three people's perspective. And like I said I usually hate that. Like if my students turn something in like that or like I read that like in contemporary fiction I'm just like okay this is not real life or whatever but now I'm like wait that's amazing if you do it well like Alice Munro it's like actually really fun and really interesting so I hope that I did it well I probably didn't because I've never done it before but I'm optimistic oh yeah let me read the story A Question of Luck by Sienna Mahutsua okay so this is um, a page about Lisa Lisa is the girl who moves from America to Swaziland because she lost her mom and then the social worker finds out that her father is a Swazi man so she's taken to Swaziland to live with him and his family. Anyway, and I think at this point Lisa's like 12 or 13. Hi Kamuta, you are so adorable. A list of things Lisa had never seen before Swaziland. Fields of sugar cane that were so lush and so purple that at first it hurt her eyes to stare, and yet she found she could do nothing but stare as the thick stalks jerked and swayed in the wind, emitting as they did a smell so sweet it made the corners in the back of her mouth water. Pineapples. Pineapples, Lisa found out, and indeed saw with her own spread wide eyes, grew as trunks rather than fruit. The green prickly bits at the top of the fruit were actually the leaves and the thick yellow core was the part of the plant that connected the leaves to the roots. And strangest of all, for she saw this even in her home, even in her dreams, was a world full of black people. This 
Lisa had never seen before. Growing up in the snowy Midwest with a blonde and curly-haired mother, Lisa could never have imagined there was anything more to the world but this. Pale-skinned soccer moms, sunburnt truck drivers, and wide, gray-haired, pasty grandmothers. Here in Swaziland, a world of lush browns awaited. At every point her eyes met, from the rich red soil of the path she walked in it near her home, to the tops of her parents' tightly coiled hairs. The world presented to her nothing but brown, rich, in, but browns. Rich, intoxicating browns. It took her some weeks to see it, for Lisa was and still is the sort of person whose inner feelings take time to reveal themselves to her. But eventually the aching thing that weighed her heart down as it swelled and bobbed the excitement of all these new things was the realization that more than anything, she wanted to tell her mother. Mom, she wanted to say, as she had ever since she'd learned to form sentences, and the two of them stood side by side brushing their teeth at the end of their day. Did you know? And then she would tell her mother whatever new thing she'd learned that day. That two plus two is equal to four. That rainbow's eye gift from Jesus. That her English te teacher grew hibiscus in her greenhouse. To lose a mother is not simply to lose a legal guardian, a woman who signs your homework, whose name is on the mailbox, whose full name you heard for the first time when you were eight. It is to lose a world of rituals, standing on an upturned bucket and brushing your teeth together while bubbles form as you recite facts is only one of them. Lisa lost the fridge door cluttered by handwritten cards. Celebrations of days and anniversaries only she and her mother cared to remember. National Cupcake Day was a carefully drawn picture of Lisa and Stella baking in the kitchenette. National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day saw the birth of a song that Lisa sang to her mother whenever Stella got that faraway look in her eyes. It went, I am the peanut butter and you are the sticky stuff, the silly stuff, the sweet, sweet jelly. Lisa lived for the days when the song worked, when that look in her mother's eyes would disappear and her face soften, if only for a moment. Now in Swaziland, Lisa was struck by all these absences. Did they even know that April the 8th was National Joy of Bird Day? Lisa took to her room, requesting quietly to be left alone. It is strange what children can sense in one another, how the sharing of a parent and almost nothing else can be enough to ensure a sort of telepathy in them, even before they recognize the depths and scopes of their own inner lives. How they, how though they may be years away from self-awareness, their ears become fine-tuned to each other's ways of being and reacting to the world. That is to say, Shengyue, her sister, knew somehow what she must do. Okay, I think that's all I can read for today. But I think that I'm really proud of myself because I did something I've never done before. And I summoned up a great deal of courage to write something I'd never done before. So that makes me really happy. Um, I don't know what else to share. I have a lot of stuff to say, so I think I'm gonna get back to making videos, at least until I go to London in two weeks. Um, I don't know, I don't wanna make big promises. But if you have been watching, thank you so much for watching. Oh yeah, this weekend I went to two plays. One play was actually four plays written by four different people by three poets and a fiction student at the workshop and <clears throat> they were really interesting. My favorite was obviously uh, Jarrell Watkins' play. Not because he's my BFF forever best friend forever, but uh, because it was about 1960s Harlem and I thought it was really fascinating and kind of interesting in the way that it was set up. Not so much as a narrative, but like a collection of scenes and like use a lot of verse instead of prose in terms of telling the story. So that was really fun. Um, what else? Oh, and then I saw a play by Tracy Morris and Bernadette Mayer 
and I thought those were really interesting. They were very different from each other, but very interesting. Um, what else? I feel like that's all I did this weekend. Uh, I hung out with Khumatza a lot. We're best friends again, so that, well, we were never not best friends, but now we're like tight as might. Alright. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.